I grew up in Frewsburg, New York, as the daughter of Ralph and Lucy Little and the little sister to Mary and John. I was a very playful child who knew all the cracks in the sidewalk with my roller skates and had lots of nearby friends. Within the tiny and very safe block of our home, I could walk to school, the post office, the bank, the butcher shop, the general store, my father's store and bowling alleys, the candy store, the pharmacy, the hardware appliance store, a gas service station, the doctor's office, and the movie theater. Little did I know back then that my life and career would one day be devoted to intercollegiate athletics. There were no organized sports for girls at my local school, but I was lucky to have an athletic father and big brother who helped me to develop basic athletic skills. My love of catching, throwing, jumping, and running as fast as I could flourished and later provided a path for me to switch focus and pursue a career in athletics. In 1977, following graduate school at Indiana State, where I was head coach of the women's intercollegiate volleyball team, I was hired by Colgate. This was seven years after women were admitted to Colgate and five years after Title IX was passed. Colgate was looking for a head women's volleyball coach and athletic trainer, and I knew this was the job for me. My position at Colgate morphed after a couple of years to include head coaching of two sports, volleyball and softball, teaching 11 PE classes each year, and working as the primary administrator overseeing women's sports. The breadth of the position fit me well. As the decades passed, I chose to give up coaching and concentrate on my administrative responsibilities much of which involve continual advocacy work and consciousness raising for gender equity in our athletics program, all with the legal leverage provided by the non-discrimination law of Title IX. Sports definitely provide an insight into what is happening in the larger societal culture. As the only woman working in the athletics administration for many of my years, advocating for equity was not an easy sell because the resources for athletics at Colgate were limited. Equity for women was threatening to the established men's programs. Around the country, women were fired for pointing out inequities in collegiate athletics. In addition, my extremely closeted lesbian identity hidden at the time, even from my own family, could be used as a factor for termination at any time throughout my first couple of decades at Colgate. So although I worked with fair-minded male administrators, my advocacy required diplomacy and tact. While employed at Colgate, my work fully encompassed my time and energy. I was a committed faculty member, coach, and administrator, and was defined by my career. With age and retirement comes time for contemplation and perspective growth. As we get older, we hopefully have more unfettered time and the good health to develop new interests and relationships, and sometimes to reconnect with what may be our personal essence. The aging process has broadened me in several ways that I never expected. It has opened me up to invaluable connections with new friends, introduced me to life-enhancing new activities, and given me the time to engage in past activities that I love. I have become a very happy participant in the Hamilton community and reignited my love for the things that make me, me.